Hey, I'm Shane. Today I'm going to be talking about the dual camera straps made by Holdfast called the Skinny Money Makers. And in this video, I'm going to be talking about all the pros and cons that I found out while using these for the last two years. So in this video, I'm going to be talking all about the dual camera straps made by Holdfast. I've been using them for a long period of time now for both my personal and professional use. And the main thing that I use them for though is wedding photography and family photography or just going on hikes like this. And I found they held up really, really well. I'll dive into just the basics of what they're used for though. And as the name implies, they're a dual camera shaft. So you can hold two cameras at the same time. A lot of photographers, including myself, prefer to use prime lenses when you're taking pictures of people because you can get more subject isolation and there's superior image quality. The main disadvantage of this is that you obviously can't zoom. So if you want to change focal lengths, you'd have to change either cameras or change lenses, which is obviously very slow. So having a system like this where you can quickly access either camera that has a different prime lens on it really can dodge a lot of the traditional issues that you'd have while using prime lenses. I've also used zoom lenses while having a prime lens on one and a zoom on the other, and I just really enjoy the system. The camera straps themselves come in two different versions. The regular money makers, which is just a very simple inch and a half wide piece of leather, and then that is the whole system. Or you can get the skinny money makers like I have, which is an inch wide piece of leather, and then you have a little bit of additional padding at the shoulder to disperse the weight a little bit better. I like the look of the skinny money makers a little bit better, but it depends on what works for you. There's also three different sizes, small, medium, and large. I went with the medium option, and for a point of reference, I'm six foot two and have a rather slender build, and I find that the medium works for me quite well. However, you can also adjust the sizes quite a bit, um, and there's buckles on both the strap here and on the backside that you can adjust the size for. So you can tailor it to your needs specifically as well, and they're easy to change on the fly if you'd like to. All the various metal components of the camera straps seem to be made out of cast metal, and they're made out of stainless steel that's very nicely polished. And I found, again, over time, there hasn't been any tarnish on the metal, and even after getting wet on various occasions, there's been no issues, and they still look very bright and shiny like the day I got them. The biggest concern I actually had when I bought these camera straps was the way it attaches to the camera, because it's obviously the most important part of any camera strap, is that it keeps your camera safe. And it attaches to the camera via a very simple system. It's a metal latch that's spring-loaded and basically has a pin that goes through a hook. And then it attaches to a small loop that you attach to the bottom of the camera through the normal tripod plate hole, like the quarter-inch screw that just goes in the bottom of your camera. And I find the included hook that it comes with is very secure and it's worn, again, very well over time. I find the spring is just as like resilient as when I got it. And my biggest complaint about the attachment system is that the spring is almost a little bit under too much tension and it can be a little bit of a two-handed thing sometimes to actually get it to release, which is far from a bad thing. When you do get the straps, they do come with an additional safety latch that you can attach to the side of your camera as well. I ended up just using the uh, Peak Design quick release system that came free with a backpack that I got. And I find this is a little bit easier because I have the little fobs attached to all my cameras anyways. However, the one that it comes with is perfectly fine. This is just what I found worked better for myself. I'll split the rest of the video up into talking about the pros and then the cons. The biggest pro of these camera shots for me is simply the look. They look very professional and they fit into a lot of situations quite well. And I can't count how many times I've been at an event or a wedding where someone started a conversation purely complimenting the camera shots. And not only is that encouraging for myself, but it also is a great conversation starter where you can talk about your work and network a little bit easier. And feeling confident while you're doing what you do is a huge pro. So for that reason alone, I like the camera shafts. However, they're also obviously extremely comfortable to use and the adjustability of the camera shafts makes it very nice because say you wanna go out in the winter and you're wearing a jacket, or you're wearing something a little bit slimmer while it's hotter weather, you can adjust the size quite easily. And if you do wanna use only one camera, you can take off a strap altogether. However, that does mess with the weight distribution a little bit, and it will feel a little bit lopsided because there's not one camera on either hip. 
With that said though, a huge pro of this system is the way that the weight is distributed. And I find it kind of pulls back on my shoulders quite nicely rather than pulling them forward. And if you do lift one camera up, the other one doesn't just fall to the ground, which is obviously good when your cameras don't fall. However, if you do have a heavier camera on the one side and a lighter camera on the other, it doesn't feel too lopsided. It can be a little bit uncomfortable if they're not evenly weighted, but that's gonna obviously happen any situation where you have a heavy camera on one side, it's gonna be heavy. With that said though, one of the cons of using a skinnier camera strap like this is that it can be a little bit uncomfortable if you're wearing them for a super long period of time. And I find that if I'm using like a 70 to 200, I can have like an abrasion underneath my shirt. That could be due to the camera shots being rather thin or more likely it's just due to my weak constitution. So it's hardly the camera strap's fault. Another small downside to the design is that because you have to thread in a hook where the tripod mount normally would go, you can't obviously use a traditional tripod plate while using these camera straps, which is not really a huge issue because if you're wearing a dual camera strap like this, most likely you are doing rather fast-paced photography where you normally wouldn't need a tripod, but the fact that you have to constantly take the hooks off if you are gonna do more casual work is a little bit annoying and particularly for myself, I sometimes misplace them. So I have a whole plethora of little hooks that attach to these straps just in case I lose them someday. The last major consideration to make while purchasing a camera strap like this is the price. And they come in various different prices depending on the materials and design that you get. The version I got was the Buffalo leather option, which is $285 US. However, you can get a little bit of a cheaper leather option, which is the bridal leather for 230, or the vegan option for $190. I'm sure all of them have a fantastic build quality. And I found that the leather in the version I got has held up really well over time and has worn in quite nicely. And I've had no issues with it. However, if you wanna get a cheaper camera strap, there are other options on the market that compare quite nicely. Black Rapid in particular makes a very nice dual camera strap. I found that the look wasn't quite something I liked and they were a little bit more difficult to get on and off when I tried them in the store, but that's just my personal preference. And even if you look on Etsy or just locally, I'm sure there's a leather worker nearby that can make something very similar for maybe a little bit of a cheaper price. But with that all said, that's going to be it for the video. I really appreciate your time and I hope you found this video was helpful. If you enjoyed it, maybe consider liking the video and subscribing. It really goes a long way for me making new videos like this in the future. And if you have any questions or comments about it, please feel free to leave a comment below and I'll be sure to answer them. Anyways, thanks for watching and I hope you have a fantastic day. See you in the next one.